Hello and God bless you. Welcome to the live show. Hope everybody is doing okay. Can you hear my sound, guys? Is my sound loud and clear? Is my sound loud and clear? Let, give me a one in a text if you can hear me, guys. Thank you for the confirmation. Thank you for the ones. Hello, Abdul Halig. Hello, Marcus Tembeck, TM Crosspills, Rad Prophet, Daniel, Sigab, Lydia Anello, Evelyn, I care, Hafsa Idasi, your moon god Allah. Yes, that's the correct name for Leh. That's the correct name for, for the Islamic moon idol, right? The Guardian, Feike, Filter Shift. Our beloved admins, Long News of Jerusalem, uh, Daily Doodle, Filter Shift, everybody. If I, if I forgot to mention your name, Kenosis, if I forgot to mention your name, forgive me. I love you all. Thank you for your support. Thank you for joining in. God bless you and God bless your families. Now, why did I wanted to talk about today's topic, guys? Because, you know, Rob Christian always get spanked and exposed by Muslim heroes, right guys? We always get spanked by Muslim heroes. So, you know, I had to make a final video before leaving you because I actually got spanked, guys, and I'm going to prove it today. So, after I'm done, you decide, either you're going to stay subscribed <laughs> or you're going to unsubscribe, right? So, we, are, we, got, we got spanked, guys. Now, guys, they keep trying and, you know, Muslims, Muslims are actually bankrupt, right? They are bankrupt. So they have to make videos about uh, us. They make videos about David Wood, about Christian Prince, hundreds and hundreds of videos. Because these people will never ever dare to call us. They are bankrupt. So they have to use taqiyya, deception. And don't forget, whenever a Muslim is trying to talk about his deen, about his man-made religion, his deen, he needs to use Taqiyya and deception because don't forget when they debate they actually are already at war with you and in this case with me or Christian Prince or David Wood or Sam Shamoon all the warriors in Christ right so debating is an art of war and art of war is deception right I mean you have that you have written you have you have read that uh, Japanese book right what's what was the name again guys help me to help you in in uh, in Japan in Japanese, I know it uh, for the English translation is Art of War, Shenzu or something. I, I forgot the the title of the book, but it's it's Japanese or Chinese. I I can't I can't remember exactly. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. It's Chinese, okay. It's Chinese. Someone is saying Chinese. Okay, Sun Tzu, Art of War. Exactly that book, very very famous book, right? And Muslims use the same Art of War when they debate or try right they are bankrupt they are bankrupt but they try right they keep trying so today guys is about this guy let me show you his face let me go to his uh his youtube page uh just a second bear with me guys to show you who we are talking about. He says, I'm going for you, Rob Christian. And till today, he, <laughs> he does not, does not ever, ever. Okay, this is the guy. He looks like a really true jihadi boy. Uh, let's see. You know, he doesn't actually cut his uh, beard or his hair. He looks like a, uh, a guy from... Like Bin Laden, right? He looks like Bin Laden. Look, this is the guy, guys. I kid you not. This is the guy. He calls himself the Muslim warrior, right? This is him, right? So we're going to expand this Abdul who, who is trying his best, right? To expose me. <laughs> look, at, look, at, look at this beard, man. I mean, come on. He, his beard is even... He, it outbeards the beard of Mimi Hijab, right? And he has very long hair, you know, yeah. they are not allowed uh, to cut the beard. Uh, they only trim the, the mustache, right? You look, look, how, look at this beard, man. Don't you want to have such a lovely beard? Right? 
Yeah, this Muslim, this Muslim uh, warrior, <laughs> he's the guy who uh, we are going to spank today. You know, it is what it is, guys. But before we start, guys, please pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, so we will be guided in today's live show. Pray with me, guys. Please forgive us our daily sins and guide us to forgive others who might curse us, Lord. Or persecute us because we are followers of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies, taqiyya of the devil and his deception. Enfold us in your arms, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might reflect your light within this dark world and that we speak your word with boldness or any shame draw and draw others to your feet, Lord. We ask this through your beloved and holy Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, please loosen my tongue today to speak the truth to our audience and please give me the courage and wisdom to do whatever needs to be done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining in, guys. Like I said, God bless you and God bless your families. And on this live broadcast, for the people who just joined in, we will have the opportunity to understand how this Muslim warrior that you see here, <laughs> he calls himself the Muslim warrior, exposed me, guys. Last but not least, when I finish teaching, we will have a Q&A session with our guests in the live chat, like always. And hopefully this Abdul is going to call me live. Finally, and I really hope that he's going to call me live. So we will have a nice debate. But I doubt, you know, it's much easier for him to make videos about me because he's a coward, right? He's a coward like all the Muslim heroes. Where is Ali Dawa after us spanking him? Where is Mimi Hijab? Where are those heroes? Where is Farid? Where is Amin? I mean, where's... Ibn Juran, where are those people? What is, where is Asadullah al Andalusi? Where are those people, man? Right? So, I hopefully this guy is going to call us and I will give him the opportunity to call me. But first, we're going to show you his lies, right? And then I will open up my Skype and hopefully he will call us, guys, okay? Hopefully, he will call us. Before we start, guys, I want to say this. Tonight, we are going to witness the most anticipated match in the history of professional wrestling for the heavyweight championship of the world. Are you ready? Wrestling fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the capital city of the United States of America, Washington, D.C., ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! All right, all right. Are you ready, people? Are you ready for another amazing live show today? Are you ready? Lord willing, we will have an amazing live show. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, as we told you guys, these people are really bankrupt. So they have to use all kinds of gymnastics. And this reminds me, you know, when some people wants to do... Uh, parachute diving and they go up with uh, with a plane a small plane and when they jump after they are jumping they already forgot about that they need a parachute and th these are basically the muslims muslims are parachute jumpers without a parachute i kid you not and today we're going to prove it to you guys today we're going to prove to you that these people are bankrupt right and they have to use all kind of gymnastics to prove their point because you know for them debating 
exposing is nothing but an art of war. It's an art of deception, right? So let us start and show you how this guy is nothing but a liar and a deceiver, right? So he made this video about me, guys. This is the guy, right? This is the guy, right? He made this video about me. And this guy is from Canada. He's from Canada. You know, to be honest, guys, the people in, in Canada, the government of Canada, who is allowing such a filthy scumbag like this, are much worse, worse than him. You know? They are much worse than this jihadi boy. He's a, actually, he's, uh, if, you, if you go through his... Uh, videos guys he's really proud he has a uh, big knife right a dagger an Islamic dagger and he's showing that his dagger on in his videos he's a proud jihadi ISIS boy right and this whenever you see people like him that means these people are actually true the true Muslims right he's the true Muslim he's the true jihadi boy right but in this case he doesn't want to grab his knife and go kill Christians and Jews in the Middle East he rather he's a hypocrite munafiq he rather sits behind his computer trying to expose people like me uh, people like david wood and he, he makes all kind of videos guys so let us start let me play the part that he's uh because this is my live show right this is my last live show and he's playing it and he's commenting on it trying to refute me now look this is funny let me put on my headset to listen with you guys too and we'll go through his talk and we are going to spank him really really hard today let us start in james translation we go to james okay well, you can see the contradiction that's what we're gonna see this king james version right here okay it says james chapter one of the bible verse 13 let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted of god for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does he tempt any man. Exactly. Okay. That's true. So it says that God cannot tempt anyone, nor is he tempted by evil. But yet we see Jesus was tempted by the devil. He was taken by the Holy Spirit to be tempted by the devil. <laughs> That's a good one. Anyway. Did you hear it, guys? Let's go. He's going to, to prove Genesis. that Jesus is going to okay. prove that, that uh, Jesus is... No, 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 why, why are you not showing us how Jesus got tempted, you filthy liar? He said that, right? You heard him, right, guys? Jesus was tempted by the devil. Ya donkey, ibn donkey. Ya donkey, ibn donkey. That's what you are, right? Ya donkey, ibn donkey. Why are you not showing us how Jesus is tempted? You see? This guy is bankrupt. So, guys, temptation, when it comes to biblical meanings, guys, temptation when it comes to biblical meanings it's not always m actually means to be tempted actually be to be tempted it means to test it can also mean to test right so temptation in the biblical sense is a situation each one in which one experiences a challenge to choose between fidelity and infidelity to one's obligations toward god god tempts you i.e tests man fidelity to himself right that's what temptation mean in the biblical sense did you catch it guys but because these bible are bankrupt uh, sorry because these muslim abduls are bankrupt they are spiritually dead they are no they are not christians they have no clue how what the bible is teaching they are so bankrupt they think that temptation means actually temptation they are ummiyun. Yes, exactly, Abdul Haliga. Do you remember the ummiyun? They are actually spiritually illiterate. That's what ummi means, right? And Muhammad himself was spiritually illiterate. Hence the word ummi in the Quran, right? So these people are actually illiterate and they have no clue that temptation in the biblical sense means to test, right? When Jesus went into in the desert and he didn't eat for 40 days, he was getting tested by the devil. Did the devil succeed, guys? The answer is no. The devil did not succeed to test uh, his te temptation, right? So the devil was testing Jesus, right? The devil was testing Jesus, yes, but he did not succeed. The devil failed. 
So why is he not going there? He's, he loves to talk about it, but this guy immediately goes to Abraham, right? So he goes to uh, Genesis 22, while he's not even, when I'm going to say something, I need to prove it, right? I, I'm an apologist, right guys? If I make a claim, I have to back it up from scripture, else no one is going to take me seriously. You heard him, right? He says how Jesus was tempted. He's trying to show you the contradiction. Well, there is no contradiction in the whole Bible, right? But before we go to, back to his thing, let me first go and prove that Jesus what, was not actually tempted. He was tested and the devil failed the test. So this is the, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 to 8, from the King James Version. Then G was Jesus let up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Do you see it, guys? As we explain to you, the temptation in biblical says is a situation where someone is getting tested, right? That's the true meaning of temptation in the biblical sense. So here, Jesus is going to be tested by the devil. And we are going to show you that the devil failed miserably, like this Abdul, failing miserably to expose rob christian or in this case our holy bible right and if we continue to verse 2 and when he had fasted 40 days do you see this also proved that jesus is not a mere man he's actually god in the flesh right jesus had, has two natures many muslims have no clue about two two natures of jesus jesus is 100 percent man and he's 100 percent divine right he has two natures so this proves that Jesus is not a normal man. Show me one normal man who can fast for 40 days. <laughs> you know, this, this here shows us how Jesus is actually divine because no man can live without food for 40 days. Right, guys? Glory to Jesus, his name. So Jesus went to for 40 days and 40 nights. He was af afterward and hungered. So Jesus was hungry but he could survive for 40 days and 40 nights right and when the temper the devil do you see it the temper the devil came to him he said if though be the son of god so if you are the son of god truly the son of god command that these stones be made bread right so the devil is is trying to tempt jesus because he knows that jesus is hungry right he, he is he is in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights without any food. So the devil is trying to tempt Jesus and he's failing, right? This is a big test, right? But he answered, so Jesus answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, right? Maybe we will die in this flesh, guys. I think that he's the one calling me. Let's see, let me open up my Skype. I have my other computer on. Abdul, if you have any shame in you, wait till I'm finished spanking you, then we will have a nice talk here. Is, is this the guy? Is this the guy? Let's see. Abdul, stop calling me for a second. Stop calling, I'll call you back. I'll call you back, wait. He wants to get spanked, guys. Stop calling, Abdul! Donkey! <laughs> what a donkey, man. <laughs> what a donkey, man. Abdul, wait, wait, hold your horses. I'm going to call you back. What a donkey, man. I think it's the, the same guy. Let me call him back. This is the guy, right? See? He's not picking up. <laughs> He's not... I'm, I'm now getting, getting called by another person. Why? How is that possible? Abdul, you're calling me when I'm calling you. What's that? This is the guy, right? This is Muslim warrior. Some, something is going wrong. I'm not sure what. He's calling me and I'm calling him. 
or is it someone else calling me? Guys, if you, if you are not this guy, don't call me. Hold your horses. I want to I want to reach this Abdul. Pick up Abdul, pick up. See? What a coward, man. Hello? Yes? It's ah, Muslim warrior. It's you, right? Yeah. It's you, right? Yeah, it's me. Okay, yeah. it's you. Okay, good. Great. Guys, this is the guy who we are spanking today. And thank you for calling me. So Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, listen, we're spanking you, yeah, okay. What? What? Come again? We're spanking you, yeah, okay. You are spanking me? Why yes. are you, why are you such a liar, man? Yeah, okay, you're a liar. Okay. In our last video, we showed everybody that you are actually lying. Let me take the screenshot. Okay. Uh, you were talking about the old covenant, but let me not go there at first. Let me go. Let me see if I can find the screenshot that we made last time. Just a second, guys. Bear with me. Wait, okay. Just one second, my friend. One second. Take your time. Take your time. Okay. Because when we talk, we don't want to talk about something that we not can, cannot back up. You, were to, you made a comment, right? You made a comment. Those who yes. leave Islam... Guys, can you see the screen? I hope the rest of the audience can see the screen. Okay, this is what you said last time. You said, those who leave Islam are free to do so, but not to fight against Muslims. You said that, right? And the screen, yes. the screen is my witness, right? You yeah, said it. Okay, guys, you heard him. He said yes. Is are you are you behind what you said? Are you still behind what you said? No, I'm not behind. This is the truth. Guys, you heard him. He said this is the truth. All right, all right, guys. He said it, right? He said it. You heard him. It's recorded. It's on tape. Why? Is, this is from IslamQ&A.info. Yes. This is a official Sunni Sunni website, and the Sheikh of this website is Sheikh Muhammad Saleh Al Munajid, right? Someone is asking, why death is the punishment for apostasy? And this is the fatwa number, fatwa number 811. Guys, someone asked this question, and now the sheikh is going to answer. The sheikh is going to answer. It's mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. Maybe, maybe Sunan al-Nisai is fake, da'if hadith, as you said in, the, in your video. But what about Sahih al-Bukhari? This is Sahih al-Bukhari, right? And this is the hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari. Read with me, guys. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6922. Let me give the link to our audience who are watching to show you that you are nothing but a liar and deceiver, Mr. Muslim warrior. Yeah, okay, listen. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, wait. No, let no, me finish, no, let no, me finish, no, no, let me finish, no, let me finish. No, no, let me finish. No, 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 what does your, what does the prophet of Islam? No, 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 let me finish, let me finish. I'm going to hang up on you. This is Hello, I'm not letting you finish. No, I'm no, not you are... finish until you answer. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait. Hello, you see, you see my. Uh, this is Sahih Bukhari or not? You, uh, hold on, hold on. Did uh, did you see the previous video that I made about you? Yes, that's the, that's what the video that we are mentioning today. We're okay, so do you know anything? Hold on, do you know anything called Isnads? This is is Sahih Al Bukhari. Okay, this okay. hadith is okay. this is not good. Okay. Is this okay. is not good? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You seen in this, <laughs> this Bukhari, hadith, you seen in this Bukhari hadith, hold on, you seen in this Bukhari hadith that Ibn Abbas did not agree with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Am I right or not? Hadith is in front of you. This Sahih al-Bukhari, Abdul. It's okay, Sahih al-Bukhari, okay, Daif. Okay. Yeah, Habibi, Habibi. Wait, look wait at the screen. Look at the screen. Wait, look at the screen. Wait a second. Look at wait the screen. No, 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 I'm not waiting. Look on, at the screen. On, hold on, look. hold on, hold on, hold on. Abdul, look at the screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Narrated you Ikrama. This is Ikrama. This is not Ibn seen, Abbas. <laughs> you see, hold on, hold on a second, hold on. So did Ibn Abbas and Ali bin Abi Talib, did he correct Ali bin Abi Talib or did he agree with read, him? Read, read. Hold on, hold on. Can you read with, can you, don't run away, don't run away. I'm not running. Did I'm, Ali I'm, bin I'm... Abi Talib, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Did Ali bin Abi Talib agree, did he, when he killed these Zanadiqa, then Ibn Abbas, did he uh, agree with the same opinion or he left the, dif uh, there were different opinions? Can you read the hadith? The hadith is for, read, read, read. It's okay. your hadith, read it. Okay. Guys, Nared, he's going to read. Okay, 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 I'll give it to you. Nared Akrima, some Zanadiqa atheists were brought to Ali and he burned them. The news of this event reached Ibn Abbas, who said Ibn Abbas did not agree with it. So he said... Continue, continue, continue. 
Okay, if he said, if I had to play, uh, if I had been in this place, I would not have burned them. As Allah's message. It's talking about the burning, right? It's talking okay, okay. about the burning. So he, okay, he continue. The burning. Okay, 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 guys, okay. let let him continue. Saying, saying, do not punish anybody with Allah's punishment. No, 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 no. Read what it says. As Allah's messenger forbade it. Compl uh, read. Ash Please read. Okay, okay, okay. Read as it is. Don't put your words. Uh, Habib, wait, read. wait. I would not have... No, no, don't call me Habib. You read. Messenger forbid it. Yeah, achi, it's the same thing as Allah. Continue, continue reading. Continue reading. I'm reading the thing that you're putting online. Okay. Here, look. Okay, read, it. read it. Okay, read it. Okay, read okay. it. Read it. Okay, okay. So, I would not have burned them as Allah's messenger forbid it, saying, do not punish anybody with Allah's punishment, meaning the fire. Yes. Ibn Abbas said, I would have... Killed them according to the statement of Allah's Messenger. Whoever has changed his religion, kill him. What did Allah's Messenger say? Okay. What did Allah's know? Can you, okay, can you repeat? On, on. Can you repeat hold what it says? Okay, what did okay, Allah's okay, Messenger okay. say? Hold on. Let me let me explain to you. Don't run away. Yeah, yeah, Rob Christian. I'm not running. I'm here. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What did yeah, Allah's Habibi. Messenger say? What did your Habibi, Prophet say? Wait, 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 wait. Don't wait, call wait. me Habibi. According to the okay, Quran, okay, not your okay, Habibi. Okay, okay. Okay. Are you All calling? Right. Are you calling Muhammad a liar? Don't call me Habibi. I'm your, I'm, I'm your enemy. I'm your enemy. Don't call me Habibi. What does what does enemy? What did, did Muhammad? Say, hold on. Did you say to love your enemy or no? Yes, but you're my. According to you, I'm your so enemy. Do, according do you like to you. Me or do you hate me? Hold on. Do you like me or do you I, hate I me? I love you. I love you. But you hate okay, me. You must hate prophet, me, right? Or, do you like the prophet or do you hate him? As as a man, I love him. But as a teacher and a false prophet, I don't respect him. Because okay, he's so a liar. Okay. No, no, do you no, love no, 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 no. You, you, you guys, you hear me, no? right? We love everybody. Hold on. Do you love? Do you love Satan or don't no? Don't change do the topic. Satan? Don't change the topic. Yeah, I'm not saying Answer. topic. I'm no, 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 no. no don't. You're running. Abdul, Hold you're on. running. I'm not changing. Uh, yeah, Abdul. The question yeah, is, no, no, no. I am not. I am not changing the topic. You have to answer me right now. This is a debate, خلاص. I, if I catch you, خلاص. No, no, so, no, you did not you catch love, me. On, listen, on, Abdul, you listen, Abdul, Abdul, you said yeah, Habibi, no, those who leave Islam are free to do so. Yeah, Habibi, not, right? Okay, okay. You said it. Let so you, let, let us go you. back to the hadith. Let me teach you. Hold on, what hold on. What did Muhammad say? Habibi. Kill yeah, them. Yeah, Habibi, uh, hey, hello, hello. <laughs> do you agree if you take one hadith and you try to destroy me with it? Aren't there other hadiths? This is Sahih al-Bukhari, Abdul. Aren't there other hadiths in the Sahih al-Bukhari. The proof is in front of you. Okay, hold on, hold on. Can I ask you a question? Did the did all the companions of Prophet Muhammad, all of them from the first to the end, were they with him in every single event? To what hear does from that, what does that matter? Single... Muhammad is saying no, 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 Muhammad matter. is saying whoever killed his uh, religion, hold on, hold on. Whoever uh, left his religion, Islamic okay, okay, religion, okay, okay, then kill okay, him. If it, not, this okay, is if it does not matter with you, if it does not matter with you, <laughs> if all these transmitters, hold on. If all these transmitters, okay, <laughs> there are different people transmitting at different events when they heard from a prophet that the others did not hear. Let me give you an example. You can go right now, search it up on your own. There's two hadiths, hold on, there's two hadiths in Bukhari. One says, whoever leaves prayer, he becomes kafir. One says, whoever leaves prayer, mutaammidan, they add mutaammidan there, meaning intentionally has disbelieved. So one sahabi has heard this while the other has not heard that. Am I right or not? What has this to do? This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Let's, let me give it to you. Let me give it to you. So you're going to judge by one hadith. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 15 of the Bible, verse 2 to 3. It says, this is you what are... Yahweh says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they what waited and Abdul. they came from Egypt. Hold on. This is this is according to you. Abdul, Abdul, it's, stay on topic. So, yeah, stay on topic. Yeah, don't run to Habibi. don't run to Bible has nothing yeah, to do with this. Habibi, listen, listen, we listen. are we are yeah, you have Habibi, to defend Habibi, your position. Habibi, Habibi, and you're Habibi. calling your prophet Allah, a lie. I'm not letting you go. Wallah, I will bust you here. I'm not letting you go. Who's getting it's busted, it's, Abdul? Is, People are laughing at you, man. People yeah, are laughing at you. Got, <laughs> Habibi, this is what you, uh, God ordered you. Now go and attack the Amalekites and compl completely destroy everything they have. Stay, stay, stay with the topic. Stay with the topic. Stay with the topic. You on, have no clue about on. the Bible. Stay topic. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a stay minute. Topic. Wait a minute. We will go to wait the Bible. Stay with the topic. Stay with the topic. Yeah, 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 Christian Robert. Yeah, Christian Robert. Get lost. Get lost, yeah, donkey. See, these people are bankrupt. Didn't I tell you guys? He wants to change the topic. He wants to go to the Bible. Get lost, man. Who are you? Never, ever, ever make a video about me. You got spanked. You got served for everybody to see. This guy is trying to say to everybody, Rob Christian is running from me. I mean, guys, this is Sahih al-Bukhari. This is your most authentic book. Sahih al-Bukhari is the second most authentic book after the Quran, guys. Who are you, man? Bankrupt people, man. <laughs>
that lost? Now you want to change topic? I have no patience for people who cannot even stay on the topic, man. Didn't I, guys, didn't I say to you, Rob Christian is going to get exposed today? I mean, look at my title of my video. Rob Christian finally exposed by a smart Muslim. This is the guy, right? This is the guy. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Abdul, Abdul, there's no need to call me anymore. There's no need to call me anymore, okay? Over. It's over for you. It's over for you. Call me another time. Today is enough enough, right? He's calling me on my other computer, but guys, forget about it, okay? If you continue hearing the song. So guys, let us go back to the hadith. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. And two, right? Two companions, in this case Ali and Ibn Abbas are against one another because Ali burned apostates, right guys, according to Sahih al-Bukhari hadith that you see here in front of you. So Ibn Abbas said that you should not have burned them. Look at this horrible crime, burning people because they left Islam, right? So he said, I should have not done this, right? I would have not burned them. Right? That's basically the context of this hadith. And if you continue, uh, Ibn Abbas refuting Ali, right? This is, this is the Ali that the Shia worship and his household, right guys? Shia worship Ali and his family, right? Ahlul Bayt. They worship the family of the Prophet. Fatima, Ali, Hassan, Hussein, whatever. So this is a Sunni hadith where Ali is getting refuted by Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad saying I should have not burned them because Muhammad said the Messenger of Allah forbid it don't burn people alive so do not punish anybody with Allah's punishment meaning the hellfire but I Abbas is, Ibn Abbas is saying Ibn Abbas is spanking this donkey here right he's spanking him saying I would have killed them according to the statement of Allah's Messenger do you see it this is Ibn Abbas talking and Muhammad said, Allah's messenger who said, whoever changes Islamic religion, then kill him. What does this donkey say? Those who leave Islam are free to do so. You donkey ibn donkey. Why are you calling your prophet a liar? This is Sahih al-Bukhari, man. Shame on you. Yeah, just keep calling me, guys. Should we give him another chance? Should we give him another chance of, or is enough enough, guys? What do you think? Is he even a Muslim? I don't know Abdul Halik. I have no clue. This guy is a fake man. Oh, you want me to call him? Okay, guys. No problem. Your wish is my command. Let me call him back. Abdullah, I'm calling you. Why are you calling me? <laughs> oh, the donkey, man. <laughs> what a miss. What a donkey. Abdul, pick up, pick up, pick up. Hmm. He's not picking up. Guys, just a second. Let me turn off the other Skype on my other computer. Maybe that's the problem. Just a second. Okay, I'm back, guys. Let me try to call him last time. Pick up, Abdul, pick up. I'm giving you another chance, pick up. Alright, not going to waste my time, guys. I'm not going to waste my time with this kid, okay? So, you see, guys, these people are bankrupt. 
they have to go to the Bible when we talk about the Hadith, right? When we talk about bananas, they love to talk about apples. My friend, I'm talking about the Hadith. And you made a claim and we made screenshots busting you in our last live show. And we showed everybody that Muhammad from many sources saying that whoever changes his religion, kill him. Who are you, man? You're a nobody. This is your prophet talking. This is Sahih al-Bukhari reporting it. Right? And as we said, guys, Sahih al-Bukhari is the second most authentic source after the Quran. Right? So who are you, Mr. Donkey? Muslim boy, who are you? You're calling me a okay? Look, guys, he's calling me a coward. <laughs> he made this video about me calling me a coward. <laughs> yeah, donkey even donkey. <laughs> so, guys, as we showed you last time, and he kept repeating it, right, guys? And I showed you this uh, screenshot in, in his comments, right? This is him, right? Muslim warrior. He said again, you can see exactly that the Bedouin became Muslim and left Islam and the Prophet never killed them. Yes, because in other hadith, right? In other hadith, Muhammad contradicted himself. Guys, can you call a question to the audience? Guys, a question to the audience. Can you call yourself a prophet and keep busting yourself and contradicting yourself all the, all the time? No. Let me try to pick up the call. Okay, what do you want, man? Yeah, yeah. How can you talk two lives? How can I talk two lives? Okay, okay. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying you're talking about the hadith, okay? So uh, do you do you believe that in the Bible you should only take one verse? Get lost. You see, these people are bankrupt. What has the Bible to do with this hadith, man? <laughs> Get lost, man. Don't waste my time, man. <laughs> The Bible, guys. What has the Bible to do with this? <laughs> Waste of time, man. I'm dealing with kids, man. The Bible? Let me give him a third chance. If he's going to talk about the Bible, you know what will happen. Abdul, don't talk about the Bible. We're talking about a specific topic, okay? Else I'm yeah. going to hang on. Yeah. Don't yeah. change. Yeah. Listen, listen, yeah. listen. Yeah. Don't yeah. change the topic. Yeah. Stay with yeah. the topic. Yeah, Christian yeah. Christian Noble. Okay, I won't change I won't change the topic. Okay, I won't change the topic. Okay, address this. Yes, because no, no, hold on. Because you know you're exposed. You know I'm, you guys, I'm debate. exposed. You're running away from debate. I'm having I'm recording this all. I'm recording this I all. Record it, record it. So okay, your Muslim okay, friends can yeah. Yeah. laugh yeah. about you. Christian Noble. Christian Robert, hold on a minute. Answer this hadith. Answer should we hadith. only judge from one hadith or should we look at the rest of the hadith in Bukhari? Okay, show us. Guys, he's going to show I us. Just saw, you how know, is Prophet? Okay, show me. Show me. Show me. Listen, listen. Show me another hadith. Listen, you were in the comment section. You were reading the comment section I wrote, yeah. right? So you're, you're going. Me wait, you wait, let me, let me talk. Let me talk. Are you going okay. to show us that Muhammad actually kept contradicting what he said earlier? Is that what you're going to show? Because okay, so if you're a prophet, the listen. New Testament. Get, so the Old Testament, the, don't the, talk about the, the Testament, Testament, Testament I'm going to hang up. Don't forget, don't talk about came it. came from the Old Testament. Get lost, donkey. Enough is enough. Right, guys? Enough is enough. I told you. If he's going to mention the Bible on his mouth, I'm going to hang up. Enough is enough, guys. This guy knows he got spanked. He is showing us clearly, guys, that his donkey prophet, He's donkey like him because if you follow a donkey who kept contradicting himself, he's bankrupt like his prophet, right guys? Muhammad says in one hadith, because, you know, it's about the money. So everything is about money and, and, and whatnot in Islam, right? This hadith that he uh, posted, guys, is talking that Muhammad didn't kill that guy at that moment, right? He didn't kill him, but in this hadith, here, Muhammad says, whoever changes religion, kill him. That means we have a huge contradiction. Right, guys? Are you with me, guys? Huge contradiction. Can, can you call yourself a prophet and contradict yourself? No. That means you're a liar. Right? You cannot have a cake and eat it too, Mr. So-called prophet of Islam. Right? Prophet of God can contradict himself. So this guy knows he's busted and he busted his own prophet, right? 
He busted his own prophet. Two times, not once, once, twice, right? And here again, you can clearly see how the prophet condemned his companions doing by killing innocent disbelievers and apostates, right? But then your prophet said, from Sahih al-Bukhari, whoever changes Islamic religion, then kill him. So clear, thank you for making my job much easier, showing everybody that your prophet was a scumbag liar, a scam, right? He's a scam, like you, right? Yeah, guys, a fellow lawyer posted the hadith, guys. Copy it, save it, bookmark it, right? So, what are you, what are you trying to say, Mr. Muslim warrior? Are you going to try to say to everybody that your prophet actually kept contradicting himself? Is that what you're trying to say? We understand that. We already know about this. If that's your point, you, have to, you don't even need to call me about this because everybody can see the huge contradiction. Right? Guys, I wanted to talk about this website, but he didn't allow me to talk at that moment, right? If we go to, let me give you the link. If we go to this website, this is a Salafi Sunni official website. And this guy is a Salafi. If you look at him, when you see people like this, that means they are Salafis, right? He's a Salafi. So... Okay, this is the website. If we go to this sheikh, his fatwa, and this is the fatwa number, 811. Someone is asking about why death is the punishment for apostasy, right? Why death is punishment for apostasy in Islam? Now, if we go down, clearly the sheikh, look what the sheikh is saying. Your question may be answered by the following points. So the sheikh... Sheikh Muhammad Salah al Munajid, this shaky Sheikh is going to answer by the following evidence why someone who leaves Islam become an apostate, an ex Muslim, you have to kill him. This ruling, number one, this ruling of Allah, look, Allah and His Messenger, not only Muhammad, Allah and His Messenger, as the Prophet, Allah is praying on him, there's nothing called blessing, you know, right, guys? Allah is praying on him, said, so Muhammad said, whoever changes his religion, kill him. Reported by Bukhari Al-Fatih, number 3017. So this is even another hadith, right? This one is 6922. This is another hadith. You see how many hadith, guys? Then, then second point. So the Shaykh is continuing. The one who has known the religion which Allah revealed, enter it. So if you become a Muslim and you practice it, then reject it, despise it and left it. So you become an ex-Muslim, guys. Pay attention. Is a person who does not deserve to live. Wow. Who are you? Ya donkey ibn donkey. Who are you to say that you, you can leave Islam and you don't need to die? as you mentioned over and over look guys he's mentioning it over you're bankrupt man who are you should we listen to the sheikh or should we listen to a street thug like you mr muslim or point three by leaving islam the apostate opens the way for everyone who wants to leave the faith thus spreading apostasy and encouraging it so this is why you have to die also the apostate is not to be killed without warning. So they have to warn him. You, they will give him a, some time, right, to co convert back to Islam. Even though this crime, his crime is so great. Look how great leaving Islam is. It's a huge crime to leave Islam, guys. Huge crime. The proof is in front of you, right? He is given a last chance, a respite of three days. So you will get three days to convert back to Islam, in which to repent. Do you see it? Do you see it, guys? Are you with me? If he repents, so if the ex-Muslim repents and he becomes a Muslim again, he embraces Islam again, he'll be left alone. If he does not repent, then he will be killed. I mean, Abdul, who are you to go against your shiuch? This is a sheikh talking. Who are you, bankrupt guy? You see, guys, Rob Christian got spanked today in front of everybody to see. Bingo. Yeah. You see, guys, how Muslims spank us? <laughs> this guy, this guy knows better than his shiuch. <laughs> Another reformer. Yeah. 
Uh, you're, you're a bid'ah boy, man. You're a bid'ah boy. You know what, you know what bid'ah is, guys? That means to reform, right? To innovate Islam. And that's a huge crime in Islam. You are not allowed to innovate. Remember the story about Rashad Khalifa, guys? Rashad Khalifa, the master of uh, Ultimate Shirk. Guys, you know Ultimate Shirk, right? Ultimate Truth. He calls himself Ultimate tr uh, Truth. Guys, if Ultimate Truth would walk on the street of Mecca and Medina, they will stab him to death. If they know he's a follower of Rashad Khalifa. And they stabbed Rashad Khalifa with a knife, right? Stab, stab, they killed him, right? So, if you go to Mecca and they know that you are going against the Sunnah of your Prophet, they will stab you to death, Mr. Uh, Muslim warrior. You are reforming. You are innovating. Everybody knows in Islam. I mean, you don't have to be an expert, guys. Everybody knows in Islam, if you change your religion, you're going to die. They will give you three days, as the uh, Sheikh says. They will give you three days. And if you don't go back, you'll die. Right? So if he becomes a Muslim again, he will be left alone. But if he does not repent and does not accept Islam again, then he will be killed. So who are you, man, to say all this nonsense? And guys, we spanked him again on this last point, last time. As long as unbelievers don't fight at Muslims, fight at Muslims, yeah. Go learn English, man. Guys, this guy is attacking me for my Arabic. He's making videos about Rob Christian, you don't know Arabic. Christian Prince, you don't know Arabic. Not only about me, about Christian Prince too. I mean, when I read Arabic, even when I read English, I can make mistakes. It's okay, man. We are humans. Sometimes I misread something. I mean, I'm a human. It's okay, right? But when, when you're going to lie without any shame like this, we will get you spanked, right guys? Look what he's saying. As long as unbelievers don't fight at Muslims physically, then they are free to do anything they want. You liar. You liar. Guys, this is Tafsir. This is Tafsir for chapter 9. Are you with me, guys? This is Tafsir for chapter 9. Chapter of the sword. Right? The chapter of fighting also. That's the other nickname. The chapter of the sword. Ayah 28. This is Tafsir by who? By Ibn Kathir. Right? Let's see if you as a Christian are free, as he claimed, you are free to do whatever you want to do. I mean, let me make it bigger so everybody can see it. Look at this huge claim. He says, if you don't fight Muslims, right? If you don't fight Muslims physically, then you as a Christian, basically, or a Jew, you are free to do anything they want. Let's say we are going to talk about the Christian, right, guys? What does the tafsir of Ibn Kathir According to Ibn Kathir, what does he say? Are we free, guys, to not pay jizya, for example? I mean, this guy is making huge claims, right? You are free to do anything you want. You liar, you filthy bastard. You are a filthy dog, right? I'm not, going, I'm not trying to insult any dogs, right? I mean, some Christians will say, Rob Christian, go easy on him, man. No, no, no. Our beloved Savior and Lord Jesus Christ said, to the Pharisees, who were Satan's worshippers like him, like this guy, he called them vipers, right? Vipers. So it's okay to call a Satan worshipper like this guy a viper, a dog. You're a nasty dog, man. So guys, let's go through Ibn Kathir, his Tafsir for chapter 9, 28, and 29. This is Tafsir for chapter 9, 28, 29. So, Muslims started because Muhammad forbid anyone to enter Mecca, right? To come near Masjid al-Haram, the mosque, the huge mosque in Mecca. This ayah means this will be your compensation for the closed market and you fear the result of it, right? So, the Muslims started to complain to Muhammad when he started to forbid non-believers to enter Mecca. And he said, don't worry, be happy. Allah will compensate you with what? With the jizya, which is mafia protection money, guys. Right? You see it? That you will get from the people of the book.
right? And if we continue reading, if we continue reading, it says, right? Don't worry, be happy. This is to be compensated for the Muslims who, for their losses by the amount of jizya that they will take from the people of the Dhamma. They call us people of the Dhamma, guys. Imagine, they are even giving us nicknames. Until they give jizya. Uh, and what did this Abdul say? You are free to do anything you want. You filthy liar. You truly have no shame, Mr. Muslim warrior. You truly have no dignity. And you have no honor. You have no honor, you have no shame, you have no dignity. Because you are allowed to use taqiyya, right? To prove your point. You filthy liar. Right? And not only that, we have to pay jizya and feel disgraced, right guys? With willing submission and feel themselves subdued, right? And if we continue, let's see, paying jizya. This is text, he claimed last time in his video, he's, and I'm going to play that later. He said that paying jizya is tax. Well, when we pay tax, let's say in uh, the United States or in the United Kingdom, we don't feel disgraced, right? You see? When we pay tax, it's not in defeat and subservience. We, when we pay tax, we are not disgraced by the government. We are not humiliated or belittled. Do you see it, guys? This is the clear description of people who pay jizya. This is tax, ya Abdul, son of Abdul. Ya donkey ibn donkey. Ya gizab ibn gizab. You have truly have no shame, you have no dignity. This is tax. <laughs> this is pure humiliation because we are not Muslims. La last time I checked, guys, tax is not a humiliation. It's not to feel disgraced. You see it? You filthy liar. Ya gizab ibn gizab. That's what you are. You donkey even donkey. Guys, if that's not enough spanking, right? When he called me, guys, when he called me, we were here, right? We were talking about how Jesus actually did not fail for the test of, this, of Satan, right? So the, this, here we stopped. Then the devil take him up in the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of temple. So... The devil took him on a higher ground, right? And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, if you are the son of God, cast thyself down. So jump, right, from the high place. For it's written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Right? So it's written, when you jump, you're going to be catched by the angels. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at time any time though that's thy foot against a stone. Then Jesus, look what Jesus is saying. The answer of Jesus, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So here Jesus is claiming divinity. You are not allowed to tempt me, my friend. You are not allowed to even test me because I'm your creator. You see? You Muslims are actually bankrupt. You have to change our scripture for your own personal agenda. But our scripture is crystal clear. Here Jesus is claiming divinity. Claiming that he is the God. Thy Lord. He's, he's claiming the, to be the creator. And the Lord of Satan. Do you see it? Now did Jesus fell for the temptation? No. Did Jesus fell for the test? No. Right? And you know the story continues. Right? So for the Muslims who are confused about temptation in the biblical sense it means to tempt it means sorry it means to test right test that's the real meaning of the word you cannot have a cake and eat it too muslims because you have to read the entire chapter to understand the story it's not like an ayah that has built on its own context right because the quran is a garbage book guys one ayah talks about uh women let's say, and then the next ayah already started to talk about battle and war, right? Because the Quran is a garbage book, right? It's a messed up book. They think that our Bible is a messed up book too. But our Bible, to understand the complete context, you need to read the entire chapter. Even 
the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation is one complete story. Right, guys? To even understand who Jesus is, who God is of the Holy Bible, you need to, to read the entire Holy Bible to understand. This is not the Quran. This is not the garbage book that you are reading from. This is not the yellow pages of Muhammad. That is the Quran, basically. Right? You see how these people are bankrupt? Quoting our scripture without any knowledge. Without any clue. Yeah, donkey ibn donkey. That's what you are. Right? And then he continued, right, to talk about Abraham. Here it says in Genesis 22, And it came to pass after the thing that God tested Abraham. Temptation, guys, as we mentioned, it means to test, right? So God tested Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now. And so this is talking about his son Isaac, right? About the offering. Then uh, God said, Wait, wait, wait. You don't need to offer your son. I will give you an offer from me. And that was actually a symbol, a sign, a prophecy about the coming of our Lord and Savior in the flesh to die instead. Right? It's all about prophecy, right guys? That the Lamb, the Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God that will die in our sake, in our place instead so we can be saved the whole bible contains more than 300 prophecies about the coming of christ guys and this was a nice prophecy about jesus right remember when jesus said and mentioned the prophets wrote about me like moses remember that uh, uh, that verse from the uh, new testament guys these people are bankrupt man bankrupt people now, if we continue, guys, about uh, here, look what he said in his video. This is his video. Let me play it. Wrote the name of Abraham like this with an E. Here's an E. There's no E. You see it? So, which one is correct? Muslims say, Allahu Akbar. No, my brother, they are both correct. So, First look, he's, look, he's calling me brother while the Quran... Guys, the Quran is telling them, don't even try to be friends. How, how am I a brother if you are not even allowed to be a friend with a Christian like me? Have you no shame? Are you calling the Quran of Allah a liar? Why are you calling me your brother? You are not even allowed to call me your friend. You are not even allowed to take friends from the Jews and the Christians. If you take friends from the Jews and Christians, you are like them. You are a hypocrite like them. I mean, let me continue. The whole as I said, the Arabic language updated from time to time. There were things that were left as they are, and there were things that were upgraded, upgraded in, uh, in times. However, it does not change the meaning because Ibrahim. Okay. Abdul, I'm not. I did not talk about the meaning, right, guys? I did not talk about the meaning, right? Here, I was not talking about the meaning. I was telling you that the Quran of Allah, guys, and we are talking about the Hafs, right, guys? This is the Hafs. This is not Warsh. This is not Qalun. This is the Hafs Quran, the recitation by Hafs. The, the original Quran is gone. There is no Quran anymore, guys. This is the recitation only. And we know that this recitation is only started to appear in 1924, right? They don't even have the original house. Can you imagine? They don't even have the original house. I challenge you to show me the original house. You don't have it. You have the Quran from 1924. And even Prince Philip of the United Kingdom, he is older than the Quran of the Muslims. I kid you not. So, this is the, the evidence that we were talking about, right? Ibrahim, with, without an E, in Surah Al-Baqarah, in the entire chapter, you see the name of Abraham like this. and But the rest of the Quran, you see it like this, right? With an E. Here without, in Surah Al-Baqarah. But here, with an E. Do you see it, guys? So, which one is correct? And this guy is talking about meaning. I'm not talking about the meaning, Abdul. You, If Allah claims to be God, as He claims in the Quran, He claims to be God, that means... 
Allah needs to change his mind and pick the right name. I'm not talking about meaning. We know that the meaning is Ibrahim. We know that. You don't have to in tell me the meaning. But here, we see a huge problem. Allah cannot have a cake and eat it too. And use the same name, but here written differently. This is so-called the book of God, right Muslims? I'm not talking about meaning, Abdul. <laughs> Lord of mercy, we're talking about a name and you can name, uh, write a name, guys, you can write a name only in one correct written name, right guys? Either it's going to be with an E or sorry, we're here without an E or here with an E. Which one is it? Can I write Ibrahim like this, guys? Can I write the name of Abraham like this? No. The correct way is Abraham like this, right? It's not possible to pick both names. This is God, so-called God that we are talking about. So either way, which one is it? Is it this one or this one? Which one? Pick and choose, Muslims. Muslims, shiuch say, Allah. Right? Right? Let me continue. Okay, it's same as Ibra, which is a mad here. Him. Okay, Ibrahim. So similarly, the no, as I said, not similar. <laughs> from time to time. However, it does not change the meaning. It's still similarly the same name. So there's no corruption in this verse. There's no corruption, guys. You heard the Abdul. <laughs> there's no corruption, guys. Abdul, Abdul, son of Abdul. No corruption, eh? <laughs> no corruption. <laughs> At all. Similarly, we can see Ya ibn Umma, Ya ibn Umma. Exactly, another Similarly, corruption. we can see that the Arabic language has evolved from time to time by this... Uh, Guys, the Quran, the Quran has been evolved. The Quran, yes, correct. The Quran has been evolved because Muslims write them both like this. But this is the Quran of Allah, right? <laughs> this is the Quran of Allah, guys, right? And he's also mentioning this, you know, many examples that we can give you, like this. Which one is correct? This is the same chapter, same ayah, right guys? What about this one? Sahir, without an elif, here with an elif. Which one is correct? A wizard. This is the same chapter, different two ayahs. So Allah needs to make up his mind and pick and choose. Which, one is, which way is the correct one? You cannot tell me it's both correct. This is not a, my book. This is not the book of Phil Horeira. This is not the book of uh, Princess Rainbow. This is so-called the book of God. And you Muslims always tell us for the last 1400 years, the Quran, not even one word has changed. Well, it is. Clearly it is. Right? Clearly it is. Clearly the Quran, guys, and the proof is in front of you, has been going under major corruption. And Princess Rainbow always say, this is the correct one, not this one. This one is false. This one is false, but this one is the correct one. Right, Princess Rainbow? <laughs> you see, guys? You cannot have a cake and eat it too, Mr. Muslim Warrior. Right? Let us go to another topic that he mentioned from my video. This one. About chapter 48, guys, I and 9. Right? Look what he's going to say and try not to laugh. Right? So you have to believe in Allah and his messenger and you have to assist Muhammad, the Rasul, in battle. You have to honor and respect him and you have to glorify him every morning and evening. Okay, so this is the this thing is carefully, that, uh, guys. most people get confused then, especially the Christians who don't know Arabic like uh, Rob Christian. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Billahi, so that you should believe in Allah, wa Rasulihi, Rasulihi with a ha means, goes back that he is the messenger of Allah, belonging to Allah. Okay, Rasulihi. But Abdul, Allah has also here a, a, a kasra, right? Doesn't mind. That's not the problem here. It says, Litumnu billahi wa rasulihi. 
right? Yes, that's what the text says. But if you continue reading, and guys, I'm going to show you that he's not talking about the grammatical mistake. This is the grammatical mistake that I'm trying to explain to you, right, guys? Here, this is a grammatical mistake. He's trying to tell you guys, what he's trying to do is, he's saying, you have to look at this. This is because it all ends with a ha, right? Rasuli he, he, right? Who, 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 right? Wa tu'azziruhu, wa tuwaqiruhu, wa tusebbas. That's not the problem. The problem is because you are a bankrupt guy, right? You don't see the problem that according to basic grammar rules, guys, basic Arabic grammar rules, the last person mentioned in a sentence like this, all the words that come after, you see, are addressed for the last person. I didn't create the grammatical rules, guys. If you go to any Arabic school, when they start to teach you things, they start to teach you the rules for the Arabic grammar, they will teach you that the last person mentioned, all the words afterwards, that come afterwards, are reserved for the last person. Why? And here's why, guys. Let me, let me prove to you why. Pay attention, guys. I know it's hard for someone like you to understand this, right? It's hard, I know, because this is Arabic. I'm going to prove to you why. Here is why, and, he, he, and I'll continue the video, and you'll see that he's not trying to teach that. Why? Because he knows he's busted, and his Quran is busted. Here is why. Because it says, That means that you may assist him. Assist him in what? In battle. Right? You have to, you, right? The one who is assisted in battle is Muhammad. So, you see, the first word already explains that, that this is for Muhammad. Did you, did you catch it, guys? This is for Muhammad because that may the messenger be assisted in battle. You have to honor him and you have to glorify him, right? What to sabbihu the prophet? You have to assist the prophet in battle, right? You have to honor who the prophet, and you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Bukratan wasila, right? Guys, let's say Rob Christian is a liar. What about an Arabic expert like who? Zakaria Butros, right? Let me play the video of Zakaria Butros, guys. Listen carefully. After this, uh, Zakaria Butros will explain. In order that she may believe in Allah and his messenger, that she may assist Muhammad in war and honor Muhammad and may glorify him who the messenger because the last word is the messenger at early dawn and the close of day even if you go to the arabic because the last word is warasulihi his messenger everything that comes after addresses the last person even to the arabic grammar style even according to the arabic rules of sentence of grammat grammatics the last word is the one addressed after so as you see we can say that according to chapter 48 ayah 9 here the quran elevates muhammad to the same level of allah this is pure blasphemy, this is pure shirk. Glorifying Muhammad besides Allah. So here we have again for the second time blasphemy shirk. To glorify Muhammad besides Allah. I'm going to show you a video from our dear friend Zakaria Butrus. He's going to confirm what I just said. And let me translate during the video. Mm -hmm. 
برسولو آخر اسم شوفي وتعذروه Did you catch it? He said the last word is رسوله So let us continue يعني تعذروه يعني تعينوه Mm. Guys, can you hear me still? I think there's something wrong with my internet or something. Guys, can you still hear me? Give me one if you can hear me. Not sure what's happening. It's buffering. Can you still hear me, guys? Let me know. Give me one. Not sure what happened to you. Let me refresh. Okay, wait. Not sure what happened. Okay. الرسول الرسول is the last name <laughs> did you catch what he said مصيبه السوداء the horrifying <laughs> basically the the face palm the uh, the black incident as he uh, call it مصيبه السوداء يا خبر ابيض for the arabic speaking people uh, between us they know what this means so let us continue كل واحد من المشاهدين ياخذ باله من الكلمه دي بعد ما قال تعذروه يعني تعينوه وتوقروه يعني تحترموه a system respect him the black incident what to sabbihu glorify him who the prophet did you catch it the prophet wow. the lady is saying wow right you heard her wow these are arabs right these are arab people like me so he's going to play uh the the lady is shocked yeah the lady is shocked Arabic Sheikh so to show you that we are not lying about the recitation or the ayah in the Arabic I'm not sure why it's buffering this oh okay it's working yeah. Always with an echo, right, guys? <laughs> wow. wow. From the morning, the early morning to the night, you have to glorify Muhammad. Did you catch it, guys? I mean, we have two Arabic speakers. You heard the guy and you heard me, right? And the lady that is sitting here who is with him, she 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 is shocked. She, they, these are people. They are born in the Middle East. They went to school like me, right? We are not lying to you guys. According to this ayah, you have to worship Muhammad, right? You have to worship Muhammad every morning and evening because glorification to glorify is an act of worship, right, guys? To glorify is an act of worship, even according to Arabic. Tasbih, to sabbih, what to sabbihu, it's an act of worship. Do you see it? Zakaria Butrus did not lie. I did not lie, right, guys? So Muslims have to deal with the fact that you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Bukratan wasila. Deal with it. So this guy is doing all kind of uh, mis <laughs> gymnastics to prove to you. With, you know, look at the 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 her right, Rasulihi. No, no. Grammar rules is our grammar rules. Grammar rules, guys, are grammar rules. The last person, everything that comes after is reserved for him. And we gave you the example that you, Muhammad, may be assisted in battle. It's talking about battle, assistance of battle, right, guys? So, clear proof that all the words that come after are for Muhammad, not for Allah. Did you catch it, guys? Yeah, all kind of gymnastics and aerobics. That's what they do because they are bankrupt. 
they need to use taqiyya, they need to use deception when they explain it to the non-Muslims. Right? Guys, <clears throat> he also mentioned that this ayah, guys, this is one of the most important ayahs in the Quran, right? Chapter 112, Surah Al-Ikhlas, chapter 1. And someone in, on um, Facebook asked me to explain this. I hope the guy is listening. I hope the one who asked me about this question, I hope you're listening. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, he is Allah, the one of. This is false translation, guys. Forget about the translation because it's false. You know when Muslims translate the Quran, it's false. They have to do all kind of gymnastics because they know Ahad is not Wahid. Ahad, guys, is not Wahid. Because Wahid means one, right? Wahid means one. Let me type it in a text, guys, for you. So, Ahad means one of. One of at least two. One of many, basically, right? At least two. So, Allah is, at, is one of at least two. Did you catch it? Why didn't Allah say, Allahu Ahad? Why did he say, Ahad? Right? Why did Allah say, Ahad? Are you telling me Allah is the worst communicator ever? Is that what you're trying to say, Muslims? Yeah, it means one of. So say, "Qul huwa Allahu, Allah al the la." That's the real name, la. That's the real name of the Islamic God, la. The la, right? La, the moon idol. So say, he is the la, right? The la, one of. So this last word means one of. One of what? Why are you not completing the... This sentence, guys, is empty. It needs something here behind. One of what? Continue, Allah. Why are you stopping? So Allah should have continued here. After this, he should have continued. He should have said, Allah is Ahad or of something. What? But we don't know what, right? He doesn't say it. He's not finishing his sentence. And let me prove it to you guys. Here's an example. Guys, here's an example. Pay attention. Okay, are you with me, guys? Yeah, so the translation in the English, guys, is false. This is false. This is Muslims who are bankrupt doing all kind of gymnastics. So if we look at this, pay attention, guys. I wrote something in English here, right? Do you see it? He is one of. Do you see it? One of. And, and then I did not stop like Allah, right? Here Allah is stopping after one of. So I continued and I gave an example, the disciples, for example, right? The disciples. Let's say the disciples of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So Allah stopped here. Allah stopped here. Why are you not continuing, Allah? What, what are you trying to say? Allah is one of what? Then Allah stops here. But I, I'm the one not being a worse communicator. I am continuing. And I say he is one of the disciples. So if Allah is one of the disciples, that means he is one of. إِنَّهُ أَحَدْ التَّلَامِيذِ التَّلَامِيذِ in Arabic is disciples. Do you see this Google Translate? أَحَدْ Let me play it, guys. Let me play the recording of tra uh, Google Translate. Pay attention, okay? Here it comes. Did you catch it? Again, Ahad. Pay attention to the Ahad. Did you catch it? See? إِنَّهُ أَحَدُ التَّلَامِيذِ Or التَّلَامِيذِ, right? He is one of the disciples. One of. But Allah stops here. Allah stops here. So basically what Allah is doing, He's removing this part. Do you see it? He should have said one of the gods. Like this, he is one of the gods. Look. Alihati, right? Alihati. 
So it should have said this. So here something is missing. After this, the words are missing. So Allah did not finish his word. Why Allah are you not finishing? Why are you stopping here? Why are you only saying this? He is one of. Yes, exactly, Abdul Haliga, you're correct. Right? So Allah is actually, he eat his tongue. He eat his word. I think the God of Aisha, guys, the God of Aisha entered this uh, chapter 112 and she ate the words that come after here. Right? This was, should have been the correct translation or the correct Arabic, right? Allah is one, like this, then, uh, then, then we have, would have accepted it, right guys? Then we would have accepted actually that Allah is one. Look what it says. Allah Wahidun. Allah Wahid, right? Allah Wahid. Like this, you see it? This is accepted. But Allah does not say Allah Wahid. Allah says in the Quran, He says, Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Why did not the writer of the Quran say, Qul huwa Allahu Wahid? Then Rob Christian would have been silent. I could not have said anything, right? I would not have been able to spank Allah in his Quran. Right, guys? You see it? This was the correct way to do it. Right? This is the correct one. Let me pose the correct one, right? This is correct. You see it? But this is false. It says I had one off. Here Allah is saying Allah is one off and then he stops. Allah, why are you not continuing? Continue, man, what's wrong with you? Brada? Brada, why are you not continuing? A brada sister, would Zekir Naik say. A brada sister. You know, Allah was hungry. He went to go and get some food. He, he didn't want to finish, right? Zekir Naik? A brada sister. Guys, I can't do it like Christian Prince, man. Don't ask me to do it. I can't do it. <laughs> so Allah should have said Allahu Wahid. Right? Then uh, we could not have spanked Allah. But Allah said, what did he say? Allah said he is one of. Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Say Allah is one of. Did you get it? So the correct translation is say Allah is one of. And then it stops. Uh oh, Muslims, you have to deal with this. You have to deal with this, Muslim. Take it, eat it, accept it, and swallow it. Don't forget to digest it because you will get really much pain in your stomach if you don't digest it. Don't forget to digest it, guys. Bam! Yes, Fili. Bam! Deal with it, Muslims. Allah is one of the many gods, right? Because when you are going to use one of, that means it means one of many, at least two, right, guys? So Allah is at least two gods in Islam. We Christians had, don't have a problem with it because we believe that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one God, right? So here, Muhammad clearly in the Quran, he clearly wanted to copy the Jews and the Christians, right? Shema Israel, God, God, God is one. Echad, right? Echad means compound unity, unification of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We don't have a problem with that. Actually, we Christians don't have a problem with this because clearly we can see that Muhammad is copying the, the Christians, right? And this is why Tawheed, guys, the word Tawheed is unification. Again, Muhammad trying to copy the Christians. Unification. Right? That's the meaning of Tawheed. And the proof is in front of you, right, guys? Because if Allah claims that he's one off, that means he is unifying. Right? He's unifying himself with many other people. And we showed you that Muslims have to worship Muhammad every morning and evening, right? They have to do tasbih. Do you see? So we have at least Allah, Allah plus 
Muhammad, at least, right guys? Two gods. And they are unified, right? Basically. Because Muslims claim they follow the Tawheed. Tawheed means unification. Lord of mercy. And guys, I wanted to show you this one. Right? Why is it saying Cindy here? It's Arabic, man. Arabic. Okay. So here, what to Aziru, guys? Here, what to Aziru? Now, when this Abdul claimed, when this Abdul claimed, this Muslim warrior, you have to uh, pay attention to he, or Rasul he. But wait a second, Abdul. It says to strengthen. Allah needs strength to be strengthened. You know, it actually, it means to assist him, right, in battle, to strengthen or to st strengthen him in battle. But does Allah needs to be strengthened? Allah needs to be assisted in battle? Wow. That does not make sense. So here, clear proof that all the words that come after the Rasul are for the Rasul. Right? Muslims are actually empty. They are empty people, man. And we clearly showed you that. Let me continue, guys. Let me continue and keep, keep spanking this Abdul. 13. This is the punishment of apostates. I'll, I'll show you how Christians use Taqiyya. Okay. So he's here, guys, yes, he, here he's going to the Old Testament. He's showing how Christians use Taqiyya. If your brother, the son of your mother, your son, here it says your son, doesn't matter what, any, uh, what age he was, even if he's young, small, below puberty or anything, your daughter, doesn't matter what age she is, the wife of your boss or your friend who is as your own soul, so he's so dear to you that you love your friend so much, they secretly entices you saying, let us go serve other gods which you have not known, neither... Yeah, so he's talking about people, guys. Let me go back a little. If, uh... So it's talking here about the punishment for apostasy, right, guys? Are you with me, guys? This is the Old Testament, right? This is Deuteronomy 13. Are you with me, guys? Hello? Give me one in the text if you are with me, guys. You're with me, right? Why here on my side it says buffering, but it says and that the stream is good. What's going on today? Lily, Satan doesn't like our teaching, guys. Are you with me, guys? Okay, okay, okay. I'm not sure what happened. Okay, but here we are back. So it says Deuteronomy 13, the punishment of apostates, apostates, right? But Abdul, let me show you your ignorance about the Holy Bible. Guys, this Abdul is so stupid, right? He's so stupid that he does not know the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, right? Christians know this. Jews know this. So he's talking about the Israelites that are under the Old Covenant, the, and which God Almighty, when He chose the Israelites to be His people, He made a contract with the Israelites alone, and only with the Israelites. Right, guys? I refresh. If you have a problem, guys, refresh. So here, God of the Old Testament, He made an, a covenant with the Israelites. So here, when it's talking about the pun punishment of apostates, this is in the time of the Jews. In the time of the Israelites, right guys? So, not only that, not only the Old Covenant, but they had also a set of rules, which were called the Mosaic Laws. And to be more specific, these were 613 laws, right? That the Israelites had to follow. You don't follow it, you get punished. You don't follow this, you get punished. So it was basically a law and punishment system. Let me put it in text. Guys, the Mosaic Law, Back in the time of the Jews, in the Old Testament, it was a punishment plus, sorry, law, rules, basically, law plus, plus punishment system. That's what it was. You don't follow a law that was given to you among the 613, you will get punished. And what was one of them? 
that was the punishment of leaving the religion as an Israelite, right? So you don't follow, you get punished. You get punished. But, but in the Old Testament, in the book of Jeremiah, right? Right, guys? In the book of Jeremiah, God mentioned that there will be a new covenant. And this time it will be all mankind, not only the Israelites, but this time it will be with all mankind. So God made a plan. This was always the plan of God, right? He chose a small tribe. Those were the Israelites at back then. He had to deal them with like a father deals with his, uh, basically with his young boy, right? These were young, it was a young tribe. They needed uh, to be uh, guided, right? In the time of the Israelites. But when, basically you have to compare this with the father with the young boy. But when this child became older, right? You're going to guide them in a different way. So when Jesus came in the flesh, he came with a new covenant. And this time, not only with the Israelites, but with all mankind. Remember what God said? God loved the whole world. And he sent his only son, right? His only unique son to die for us. So God came with a new covenant. And then Jesus fulfilled the old covenant. He fulfilled it, not banished it, not uh, abrogated it. No, no, no. He fulfilled it. He didn't abolish it. He fulfilled it. Guys, pay attention. Whenever a Muslim says, oh, Allah, or, or sorry, God of the Old Testament is making his mind up. He's changing him. No, that, ha that has nothing to do with changing his mind. It's fulfilling. So Jesus says, I did not come to abolish the law that's what jesus said right guys i did not come to abolish the law cancel the law no i came to fulfill it so jesus fulfilled the old covenant and he fulfilled the mosaic law the 613 laws so this abdul he goes to, back to the old testament without any clue he know he doesn't know what he's talking about you need first to understand the difference you see these people are bankrupt they are spiritually dead. Didn't we say it in the beginning of our live show today? These people are spiritually dead. They have no clue what the Bible teaches. The Bible, for the people who are listening, the Bible is one complete story from the book of Genesis all the way to the last book, the book of Revelation. It's one complete story. People, in this case, Adam and Eve, mankind separated from God when they went against God. And then God, his plan, he had a huge plan through the centuries right through the centuries god had a huge plan and that plan was to reunite mankind with him again his plan was to send jesus right because if you need to be reunited with god you need jesus you need god himself to to, to be reunited we cannot help ourselves we cannot save ourselves we need god himself coming in the flesh to save us right because God is a loving God, He came to save us because we are not worthy to save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. We were the one who went against God. And one thing, guys, for example, let's say, guys, I'm not a Christian. God forbid. Let's say I'm, I'm not a Christian. I never accepted Christ in my life. And I would go now to a candy store and I steal one small candy that means I'm going to go to hellfire why because we are talking about a very holy right a very holy and just God he's a just judge and if he's a just judge he will not allow you to go get away with one small sin right guys it means death you will die in your sin right didn't God say that in the Bible you will die in your sin so what, stealing a candy, that means you're, it's over for you. But if you accept the grace, and the grace is free. The grace of God is free. If you take it, take it to you, to you, you accept His grace, you will be saved. And you are saved not by works, but by grace. And it's a gift from God. So accept it. Muslims, drop Islam. Islam is not salvation for you. And you see these people are bankrupt, man, right? 
These people are bankrupt. Poor people, man. This is why we always say Muslims are actually a victim of this man-made cult. Because they have no clue what the Bible says. They are spiritually dead. Bankrupt people, man. They love to attack the Bible, but without any clue. They have no clue about the Old Covenant. They have no clue about the 613 laws. That, the, that was only and only for the Israelites. But when Jesus came with the New Covenant, He fulfilled the Old Covenant and He fulfilled the Mosaic laws. Jesus said, right, I came to fulfill, right, the laws. And that's what he did. This is why we are not getting punished for apostasy. It's not for us anymore because Jesus fulfilled all that. Muslims, unfortunately, are spiritual dead. And they will never ever understand the Bible if they don't look at it with a sincere eye. Exactly, Andy. Exactly. Jesus came to serve. Jesus came to serve. Jesus came to die for us. Because only his sinless blood, his sinless blood could save us. You need a sinless soul. And who is only sinless? Only God is sinless, guys. God, his nature is against sin. And Jesus challenged anyone. To show him that he sinned. He challenged them. Show me where I am sinning. Right? And he never sinned. Even in the Quran, Jesus did not sin. Guys, we, we showed you. We just showed you that God came with a huge plan. First, he gave the old covenant to the Israelites. And he gave them a set of rules, a set of laws. 613 to be specific then jesus came to fulfill them right he fulfilled the old covenant and he fulfilled the 613 laws the mosaic laws right but in islam the, because allah is not our god muslims love to tell you allah is the god of the jews and the christian you liars never accept that guys because their god is a dead god he's the moon idol right so, because he's a dead God, because he's a fake God, he needs to abrogate himself. And this is why the concept of abrogation, right? The concept of abrogation is in the Quran and the Sunnah. Do you see it? This is Sheikh Muhammad Salah al Munajid again. Right? Allah, guys, the Allah of Islam is like a kid in a candy store. Basically, Allah is walking, picture, picture this in front of you. Allah is walking as a kid in a candy store. He's with his mommy. He sees a, a delicious candy. He says, mommy, I want that candy, right? I want that candy. So Allah is saying, right? I want that candy. Mom, I want it. Then his mother gives him the candy. One minute later, Allah is walking still in the candy shop, in the candy store, and he sees a very, very delicious, bigger candy, right? And he says, Mom, I want that candy. And he drops that old candy, the small one, and he picks up the big one. So, this is why Allah is changing his mind in the Quran over and over. And even Muhammad can abrogate the words of Allah. <laughs> A mortal man can abrogate the Quran, the words of Allah, right? You see, Allah is like actually like a kid in a candy store. Changing his mind over and over and over. Corrupt religion, man-made religion. For example, I'm going to give you an abrogated chapter, guys. Let me give you the chapter in the li as link in the chat. This is a really famous chapter of the Quran. Surah Al-Kafirun, chapter 109. This is the, uh, the chapter that Christian prince always love to mention. Say, O you that reject faith, I worship not that which you worship, nor will you worship that I worship, and I will not worship that you were, uh, what, been, want to worship, nor will you worship that which I worship, to you be your religion and to be mine, right? Stupid chapter. Right? This entire chapter, guys, it's still in the Quran, but you can big, may, uh, put a big cross on it, right? A huge big cross on it because it's abrogated by chapter 9. 
chapter 9, the chapter of the sword, right? Chapter 9 abrogated this entire chapter. Because here you're allowed to believe what you believe. But chapter 9 says, if you don't believe, we will hack off your throat. We'll cut off your throat, your head. The Jews and the Christians are forced to pay mafia protection money in the form of jizya. But the pagans will die anyway. So this so-called peaceful ayah, this, this, this entire chapter is gone. You can put a big red cross on it. It's abrogated, right? As we mentioned. An entire chapter abrogated. And not only that, if we go for, to Tafsir chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, 256, this ayah that is talking about there is no compulsion in religion, remember guys? Let me go to this ayah. Muslims love to tell you there is no compulsion in religion, right? It's a huge chapter. You see it? Let there be no compulsion in religion. This ayah is also abrogated. La ikraha fiddin, right? This chapter is also abrogated and here's the proof. This is Tafsir, Asbab al Nuzul, Bay al Wahidi. The reason why the ayah came down. Tafsir, right? You see? Tafsir. Very highly respected Tafsir. It says, This was before the Messenger of Allah. Allah is praying on him. There's nothing called bless. Allah praying on him was commanded to fight the people of the book. But then Allah saying, There is no compulsion in religion. Was abrogated. Do you see it? And then the Prophet of Islam, let me make it bigger. The Prophet of Islam, because it's abrogated, the ayah is completely abrogated. So you can put a big cross on this ayah. It's abrogated and the Prophet was commanded to fight the people of the book in, the, in Surah Repentance. What is Surah Repentance, guys? That's chapter 9, right? That's chapter 9. That's this chapter. You see it? This entire chapter, guys, abrogated chapter 2, ayah 256. Do you see it? This is not my Islamic book. These are Muslim Islamic books. So this is how Allah is changing his mind every second. Like a kid in a candy store. Because they follow a bankrupt God. A God that changed his mind. This is why these people are bankrupt. Islam is a bankrupt man-made religion. And it will die soon actually. Because the internet guys is the worst enemy of Islam. Thousands and thousands of Muslims in the Middle East are leaving Islam. Thousands by the thousands. They know it. But they don't like to talk about it. Alright. Bankrupt religion. I remember when we, when he called me, this Muslim warrior, <laughs> this kid, man, this Muslim warrior, when he called me, guy, you heard him, right? He's saying, those, this hadith, he said, this hadith is da'if. Look what he's saying. He said, it's da'if. 59. Sunan and Nisai. Look what he's saying. Hadith guys. number 40, 59. What does it say? Muhammad said, whoever changes his religion, kill him. What does this Abdul say? Those who leave Islam are free to do so. Do you see it? Let me make it bigger, guys, for the people who need glasses. And I'm not insulting anyone who is wearing glasses. I love you guys. <laughs> Don't worry. So this guy, look at his lying, man, lying without any shame. Pure taqiyya, exactly, pure deception. This guy is haunting me, guys. All right, I'll go from the Quran. I'll give it to you, okay? Quran chapter 60, verse 8 to verse 9. He needs to go to another chapter. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous towards them and acting justly toward them. Indeed, Allah loves Go back to the hadith, Abdul. Go back to the hadith. Allah only forbids you from those who fight you because of religion and expel you from your homes and aid in your expulsion, forbids that you make allies of them and whoever makes allies of them, that it is those who are the wrongdoers. Yeah, filthy liar. 
احسن اوف متعه You know when uh, people call me son of Muta, okay? Anyway, so the guy was calling this hadith da'if. He said, you heard him right when he called me. He said, uh, you know, Ibn Abbas this and Ibn Abbas that. But then <laughs> we showed him from Sahih al-Bukhari. Let's say this hadith is da'if. Let's say this, guys. Let's say that this hadith is da'if, right? It says sahih, but let's go with him. Is Sahih al-Bukhari da'if too? Huh? This is Sahih al-Bukhari. It says, Allah's Messenger said, whoever changes his Islamic religion, kill him. And we showed you from Islam Q&A. Let me give you the link again, guys. We showed you that even the Sheikh is spanking this kid. Look how many points. By leaving Islam, the apostate opens the way for everyone who wants to leave this faith. And you are allowed. He does not deserve to live you have to kill him you are not allowed to live you do not deserve to live you have to die if you leave islam right and he will get three days as we mentioned earlier he get three days to repent if he if he repents he will be left alone according to the sheikh if he does not repent then he will be killed so who are you mr muslim warrior are you do you know islam better than you shiuch this is Sheikh Salafi Sunni Sheikh Sheikh Muhammad Salah Al Munajid Sheikhi Sheikh. And do you know better than your Prophet? This is your Prophet talking. Do you know better than Sahih Al Bukhari? <laughs> Sahih speaking from Cave Hira. Sahih Al Bukhari says and reports Allah's Messenger said, Whoever changes Islamic religion, then kill him, kill him. Kill him. If you become a Muslim, ex-Muslim, kill him. Kill him. Speaking from Cave Hero. You see how bankrupt these people are, guys? Right? Bankrupt people. Playing with our Holy Bible like it's a toy in their hands. Right? Bankrupt people, man. Guys, do you do you like the spanking of today for so far? Yeah, and actually, guys, as Hafsa Idasi, Hafsa Idasi, are you an ex-Muslim sister? You have an ex-Muslim name. Are you an ex-Muslim? Hafsa, sister, are you an ex-Muslim? You have actually a an Arabic name, Hafsa. That's one of the wives, right, of Muhammad. Used to be one of the... Okay, so here we have a dear ex-Muslim sister. Did you accept Christ in your life, Hafza? Are you a Christian? Did you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? Wow. God bless you. God bless your family. Welcoming Christ, sister. We love you. And she, as she said, guys, let me highlight what she said. Guys, we don't actually spank this Abdul for fun. I'm not doing this for fun. I'm showing everybody, including the Christians, including the Muslims, including the atheists, that Muslims who claim to be Muslim apologists, they have nothing. They are bankrupt. They have to use deception. They have to use all kind of gymnastic to deceive people. And he got spanked horribly today. Again and again and again. So our dear sister said, Hafza Idasi said, Muslim warrior, leave Islam. We love you. Actually, we love you, Mr. Muslim warrior. I don't hate you, my friend. But you have to hate me, right? As a Muslim. And what is more beautiful than the love of Christ? We are commanded to even to love our worst enemy. And I, you know, I don't even consider you to be my enemy, man. You are actually spanking Islam. You are making my job much easier. And you are going against all of your scripture. I mean, who knows Islam better? You are the Sheikh. This is a PhD Salafi Sheikh, man. Who are you? Who are you compared to Sahih al-Bukhari? Al-Bukhari, Imam al-Bukhari. And not only that, guys, he actually spanked his own prophet. He is showing us that his prophet loved to contradict himself over and over. In one hadith he says this, in other hadith he said that. But you need to understand guys, that Islam basically is like a, uh, 
was founded and made as a step, right? The more Muhammad started to get ayahs and you know, and he gave hadith to people, it started to develop. First, remember, first when he was in Mecca, he was very peaceful, right? He was very f peaceful with the pagans. But when, when he went to Medina, Muhammad changed his mind 180 degrees from peaceful to violent, right? So Muhammad, maybe at that time, right? At that time, he was peaceful. But much later, and this is in the final stage, Muhammad said, whoever changes Islamic religion, kill him. Islam, guys, is actually like a steps, right? Steps religion. For example, Muhammad, before his death, he started to forbid alcohol. But the Sahaba before that, and even Muhammad used to drink Nabid. And Nabid, guys, is wine. Then much later, when Muhammad became sick from the poison, right? When Muhammad became sick, he started to forbid the alcohol. But he himself used to drink Nabid, which means wine, alcoholic drink. So Islam is a step, step one, step two, you know, all the way to the last stages of Islam. So here, this is one of the final stages where Muhammad says, whoever changes his religion, kill him. And it stopped there, right? So from now on, from now, from that moment on, when Muhammad said that, Muslims must kill the ones who leave Islam. If he does not repent, then kill him. Right? But this guy, he is using taqiyya, guys. How many times did we tell you? Muslims, when they debate, they have to use deception. And taqiyya is deception. And you are allowed to use taqiyya when you are at war. And they are always at war with us. Right? Is there any question in the chat, guys? Is there any question in the chat? Is there any question in the chat? Do we have any question, guys? Do we have any Muslim who wants to call me? If you are watching, put it in the text. We will open up our Skype and we'll have a nice debate. Do we have any Muslim in the chat? Give us your Skype ID and we will call you. Thank you, Marcus Tembeck. God bless you, my friend. I appreciate it. The lovely Manta Ray too says, Rob, Christian, could you do a video on male circumcision in Islam and the Bible? I can do that. But there are so many topics on my mind. <laughs> you have no clue how many topics I have, guys. You know, let me first work on my own list first. Then <laughs> we will continue. Don't worry, there will be many live shows. Lord willing. Lord willing, there will be many fantastic live shows if the Lord wills. Do we have any question, guys, about today's spanking? Yeah, man, you know, this is why, you know, I gave, I gave him three chances, right? And every time he needs to go to the... What has the Bible to do with this, man? He went going to the Bible. What has the Bible to do with this topic? Jumping from the, the hadith to, to the Bible, what has the Bible to do with this? What has the Bible to do with Islam? Right? Let, let us finish this topic, then we will go to the Bible. And we went to the Bible, right guys? We showed you how, how he was lying about Jesus being tested by the devil. And we spanked him on it, right? We are not afraid to go to the Bible, but let us finish this topic. Then we can go to the Bible, no problem. Yeah, I hope, you know, he has many boyfriends. He has many Muslim boyfriends, actually, who are always uh, going to his, uh, <clears throat> to his channel. Right? 
and they they are applauding him you did an amazing job you know it's so funny man let me show you the comments guys it's, try not to laugh at this kid man i'm sure he's going to make another video tomorrow about today's spanking you know look at the let me make it bigger guys look at, look at the comic look what kind of nasty filthy dog this guy is nasty man look what he's saying let me make it bigger for everybody to see this is the guy right muslim warrior look what he's saying he's talking about the penis guys he's, these people are so bankrupt he needs to talk about the penis and this guy has truly no shame he says i don't want to mention it it's an arabic term used to refer to people who are attracted to worship the what so it's, he's talking about us. Look at this disgusting sa Satan worshiper, man. Disgusting. And you want me to debate such disgusting people, man? You see? So where did he got this from, guys? Where did he, he learn this language from? This nasty language. He learned it from his prophet. You know what Muhammad said? Let me type it in the text. Muhammad said, anyone... Who, and I think, uh, Phil Herrera, if you're with me, give them the hadith guy, my friend. Anyone who is proud about, and he's talking about Sahaba, to the Sahaba, right? Anyone who is proud about his pre-Islamic period. You know what, he, what Muhammad said? If you're proud about your Islamic period, then... Muhammad continues, go bite on the penis of your forefathers. That's the word of Muhammad. This is the prophet of Islam, guys. Go bite your father's penis. So this guy learned this nasty language from his fake prophet, his filthy prophet. And even Abu Bakr, uh, I'm sure uh, our brother Phil Horeira is always amazing with copy-pasting links. What about Abu Bakr, the second guy in command? Abu Bakr, guys, he became the first caliph. He said, go lick... Man, this is nasty. I don't want to say it, but I will type it. You can read, guys, right? Go lick... I hope I'm not butchering the, yeah, you know, you, you, you understand, right? That's what Abu Bakr said. So the, the first guy, Muhammad, and the second guy used foul language. So what do you expect from these nasty people, man? Right? Filthy people. You want me to debate such guy? Guys, you want me to give him more than three chance? Yeah, Abu Bakr is the father of Aisha. The baby bride that Muhammad split into two in his bed. His baby bride. And, so, and these guys, you know, look, guy, my friends, you know what I really find disturbing? You claim to be a uh, uh, Muslim apologist, right? Trying to defend Islam by trying with your bankrupt ideology to attack us. Look at this guy. He gives himself hearts, man. He loves this guy, loves his, himself so much. He gives him his own comments, hearts. Look. This guy loves his, his, himself so much. Oof, oof, oof. <laughs> oh, he gives himself an... Oh, man. This is really sad. Yeah, look. He puts a heart under his own comment. I won't let get robbed away you mess with the wire you get what's coming to you yeah we you showed to us today my friend you really spanked rob christian left and right <laughs> this is the people guys he says he knew i was away on skype and so he called me to fool his audience while i wasn't home yeah my friend yeah yeah we are running from you we showed everybody that we are running from you guys i'm sure this guy is not going to sleep very well tonight I kid you not. He's not going to sleep very, very good tonight.
right? Poor guy. Poor victim of this man-made cult, right? Do we have any other questions, guys, about today's spanking, today's teaching? Call it what you want to call it, right? Yeah, and Muhammad actually was bisexual, yeah. True story. Muhammad was not only bisexual, he was also um, raped by his own cousin. He said, Ibn Ammi hataka ardi. My cousin raped me. That's what Muhammad said. And it's authentic hadith. Right? Ibn Ammi hataka ardi, Muhammad said. My own cousin raped me. Thank you, the lovely mentor Ray too. God bless you. Hopefully one day uh, you will become a Christian. A dear brother in Christ or sister. We love you anyways, the lovely mentor Ray too. We are not like the Muslims who need to hate everybody who is not a Muslim. They can't even love one another. I mean, Shia are Muslims. Sunni are, they, and they curse each other left and right, right? They curse even the family of Muhammad. Sorry, yeah, they, yeah, sorry, they curse the Sahaba, right? Shia curse the Sahaba. They curse Abu Bakr, they curse Aisha, the wife of Muhammad. Yeah, she's family, I did not like. So they even curse the family of Muhammad. They curse Hafza, they curse Omar. This is why Shia still practice muta in the Quran, chapter 4, ayah 24. Because they reject that Omar abrogated muta. Omar basically became a prophet. <laughs> After Muhammad, and he's the one who abrogated muta, not Muhammad, because in the time of Muhammad, people practice muta, right? And Muhammad himself practiced muta, right? Prostitution. Yeah, exactly, Abdul Haliga. They curse the Sahaba. They curse even the mother of the believers, right? Shia. They curse her left and right. It's a religion of cursing, hating. And they will, among themselves, they will never have any peace. And you claim that Islam is peace? <laughs> Make peace between your, among yourselves, then try to tell the Christians who are too smart in 2019 to accept your taqiyya, accepting your lies and deception that Islam means peace. Yeah, we believe actually that Islam means pieces, right? Islam means pieces. And we made many live shows about this topic. Yeah, he, look what the, our dear sister is saying, Hafza. He does, he says, true, my Sunni Imam dad also says that Shia are not Muslim. So your dad was, a, was an Imam, wow. Imagine guys, here we have a dear sister in Christ who, was, who is an ex-Muslim. Ex Her dad was an Imam and she, I really salute you, Hafza, that you, even your dad is an Imam and you left Islam. I salute you, sister. God bless you. What about the rest of your family? Did they uh, become Christians or are they still Muslims, Hafsa? Are they still Muslims or are you the only one who is Christian? Be safe, okay? Stay safe. Don't tell anyone where you live. Or... Okay, they are still Muslims. Wow. Okay. May God, our true God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob of the Holy Bible, may he open their eyes. There is hope for everybody, right? I know, I know they hate you, I know. Because Islam teaches that, right? Imagine Christians are commanded to love Muslims, to love everybody. But in Islam, because it's a hate cult, they even hate their own daughter. How can you hate your own daughter, man? How can you hate your own daughter? Right? Disgusting religion, man. Please come back home. If our dear sister here in Christ can become a Christian and even her dad was an Imam, what about you, Muslims? Today we prove to you that Islam is a bankrupt religion. You have to follow bankrupt people like this Salafi jihadi terrorist guy. And it's really devastating for any Muslim to try to defend this man-made cult called Islam.
Yeah, stay safe, sister. God bless you. And hopefully your family will become Christians too. Right? Pray for her family, guys. Keep them in your prayers. Keep her also in your prayers. Don't forget to keep us in your prayers, guys. Please also, if you like our work, support us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Smash that like button and click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Help me to help you guys. By the way, when we shut our live show down today, when we finish, uh, it will take at least one hour for YouTube to process the video. So if you want to rewatch it and you want to see the live chat, you know, the live chat that you're typing in now, it will need an hour for YouTube to process it. So to see everything, you need to wait an hour. And also download our videos, guys. Download our videos. Please help me to help you. Don't do it for me. Do it for the victims that we call Mohammedans. God bless you and your families. Thank you for your support, guys. And like we always say, you don't need me, guys. You don't need me. You don't need Christian Prince. You don't need Sam Shimon. You don't need David Wood. You only need Jesus because I myself need Jesus. But if it's God's plan, if it was Jesus' plan for me to teach, then I humbly accept it. And I will continue to teach you about this nasty cult. To expose Islam so that Muslims will leave this satanic cult. No, um, I have to go get myself something to eat. I've been already for more than two hours live. Right? We need to wrap this up. I hope you enjoyed our today's spanking, teaching, call it whatever you need to call it. I love you guys. Sorry if I cannot take any more calls or answer any questions anymore because two hours, it's, you know, kind of long. Keep your questions, keep your call. If you want to call me, keep your calls for the next live show, Lord willingly. We are going to have another amazing live show like today. God bless you. God bless your families. Stay away from Islam. Jesus is Lord. Islam is false. And Muhammad is also a scammer. A fake man-made prophet. God bless you. And Lord willing, we'll see each other once again. See you later, guys. God bless.